When we talk about individual taxes and your individual income, you hear a few different terms thrown around in terms of what your income is. All right, we hear the term AGI, adjusted gross income. We hear net income, we hear taxable income, but what do they all mean, right? What do each of these types of income mean to us as taxpayers and which ones are the most important ones to look at? So today we're gonna talk about the three income lines on your individual 1040 return and really dig into what each of these numbers actually means to you. When you look at your 1040, the first line you're gonna see that totals your income is line nine, and it's called total income. We also sometimes refer to this as your gross income, all of your earned income, but what this means is all of the income that you've had come into you as a taxpayer or you and your spouse if you have if you're married all of the income that you've earned throughout the year is on the lines one through eight and line nine totals this all up this is going to include all of your income you guys from everywhere so it's going to include your w-2 wages it's going to include any investment income including interest dividends capital gains it's going to include your social security income or your pension or retirement income if you're taking retirement distributions. It's also going to include your business income. If you have a Schedule C business, your Schedule C income. If you have a partnership or an S Corp, it's going to include your income from those. It's also going to include your rental income. So all of your income streams all come in, they all total, and they come into line nine total income of your 1040. A quick note on this, you guys, because we talk about gross income, right? It's your gross income as an individual. Why I say that is because if you own a business, okay, it's actually your business's net income that comes into you. I know that kind of sounds confusing, but your business is its own entity. So your, your business already took all of its income, subtracted all of its business expenses to come up with your net business income to you as an individual. So it's the net business income that wraps into all of these other numbers, whereas everything else is gross, right? It's all of your wages, it's all of your interest expense, it's all of your social security. It's only the business piece that gets a little, a little confusing, but as long as you remember, the businesses already took the expenses, so now you're just taking that net amount and adding it to your big pile of income. So the second figure we look at at a 1040 is line 11, and this is your adjusted gross income. And this is your income after adjustments, exactly what it sounds like, right? It's your income after adjustments, but before deductions, and that's where we're gonna decipher adjustments versus deductions in these next few pieces. Your AGI, you guys, your adjusted gross income is usually the number that your lenders look at when you're buying a house or looking to refinance a mortgage or um, try to borrow any sort of money. When they're trying to look at what your, or what your income is as an individual, your AGI is usually the very first place they look to get an idea of what your income picture looks like. So the adjustments that are made to get from your total income to your adjusted gross income, your AGI, these adjustments actually change every year depending on tax law and tax code. So your 2021 adjustments, you guys, those are gonna include your self-employed insurance, so your insurance premiums if you're a self-employed individual, half of your self-employment tax if you're a self-employed individual. It's also going to include your HSA, your health savings accounts contributions for the year, as well as student loan interest, tuition and expenses deduction if you take that, and it's also any of your self-employed pension, your SEP or your simple IRA deductions if again you're self-employed. So let me, let me review that one more time. If you're self-employed, okay, you, you have more adjustments because if you're self-employed, you get your SEP or simple IRA as an adjustment. You get your self-employed health insurance premiums as an adjustment, and you get half of your self-employed taxes as an adjustment, right? If you're not self-employed, then the rest apply to you, the student loan interest, the HSA contributions, and the tuition and deductions expense. So that brings us to our last figure, line 15, which is our taxable income, right? And this is going to be our income after we get to take our deductions. 
In 2020, there are two types of deductions that you can make in this section of your return to get to your taxable income. It's your standard or itemized deduction, one or the other, okay? And we have a, another video that we talked about, the difference between these two. You can go check that out. And there's also your qualified business income deduction, which applies if you're a self-employed business owner who has either a Schedule C business, a partnership, or an S corporation. So those are the two deductions that bring you from your AGI, your adjusted gross income, down to your taxable income. Your taxable income is exactly that. It's the number that your tax is actually based off of. All right, so this is the number that when you're filing your tax return, that's the one you're caring about. So in the end, you have three numbers, right? You have your total income, you have your AGI, your adjusted gross income, which is what most lenders are gonna start with and look at first, and then you have your taxable income, which in the end is what you pay taxes on. And each of these numbers, you guys, typically gets lower and lower. So your total income is higher than your adjusted gross income because you got to make adjustments to it, right? And then your adjusted gross income is higher than your taxable income because you got to account for deductions. If you guys have any questions about what we talked about today, go ahead and leave a comment below. And then I highly, highly suggest you head on over to our Facebook community, Money, Taxes, and Finance for Small Business, because these topics are what we talk about on a regular basis and have live trainings on every week. You can access that group by clicking the link in the description box. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and while you're loving on me hard, go ahead and hit the notification bell so you never miss a future video.